As part of our continuing effort to understand the interactions of air, oceans, and land, the National Center for Atmospheric Research was established in Boulder, Colorado in 1960 with funding from the National Science Foundation. The Scientific Computing Division at NCAR is dedicated to providing the best available, highest performance computing and archival services to scientists engaged in the study of the Earth's biosphere. Today, more than 1,700 atmospheric researchers in the geosciences, including the areas of fluid atmospheric sciences, physical oceanography, and fluid dynamics, located at over 160 sites around the world, depend upon the Scientific Computing Division at NCAR for state-of-the-art, large-scale computing services, primarily for atmospheric modeling and analysis of very large data sets. Many of the studies conducted at NCAR provide valuable information about the world around us that is of significance to all of us. Some of the areas that NCAR studies include microburst wind shear, strong, dangerous downward winds whose occurrence around airports can cause commercial airline crashes like that at Dallas-Fort Worth Airport in August 1985, lightning, depletion of the ozone layer, nuclear winter. Most of the data generated at NCAR comes from sophisticated mathematical models that scientists have constructed with their computers to simulate natural phenomena. One example is this general circulation model of the Earth's atmosphere called the NCAR Global Weather Model, which attempts to simulate the behavior of the weather around the Earth. The NCAR Global Weather Model is the most sophisticated and complex of its kind in the world. You can imagine that simulating the weather of the entire Earth all at once is a big job. Managing the resources to accomplish that goal is one of the responsibilities of NCAR's Scientific Computing Division, or SCD, which occupies over 15,000 square feet in the first basement of the Mesa Laboratory. SCD operates 24 hours per day, 365 days per year, and is, in fact, the largest and most sophisticated atmospheric computing facility found anywhere in the world. Now, let's begin our tour. The main computing power for NCAR researchers is provided by two Cray supercomputers, which are hundreds or thousands of times more efficient and faster than ordinary computers. The first, a Cray 1A Serial 3, is located closest to the window. Serial 3 was the first Cray supercomputer purchased by any organization for scientific research and was installed at NCAR in July 1977. At the time of its installation, Serial 3 was the world's fastest computer, executing 80 million floating point operations per second. In 1983, when the Scientific Computing Division acquired a second Cray 1A, it doubled the supercomputing capacity of the NCAR computing facility. To the right of the Cray 1A are 16 DD19 disk drives, each capable of holding 300 million bytes of data that provides storage for the Cray 1A and can be accessed as needed very quickly. The second Cray 1A was replaced in 1986 with this Cray XMP48 supercomputer. The XMP48 contains four parallel processors capable of performing up to 800 million floating point calculations per second, almost eight times the capacity of NCAR's original Cray 1As. The two columns on either side of the XMP48 mainframe are the solid state storage device, or SSD, and the input output processor, or IOP. The SSD provides 256,064-bit words of electronic storage, similar to random access memory, or RAM. The IOP controls the flow of the huge streams of data moving back and forth between the XMP48 mainframe and other computer systems elsewhere in the room. Disk storage for the XMP48 is provided by 16 DD49 disk drives located behind the XMP48. Each DD49 provides up to 1,200 million bytes of storage for a total of 19.2 billion bytes. To the right of the DD49s is the intermediate disk storage, which consists of 24 IBM 3380 disk storage units, each providing 5 billion bytes of storage for a total of 120 billion bytes of fast access storage. These disk drives are used for temporary intermediate storage of archival data files that are accessed most frequently by SCD's users. Atmospheric scientists, because of the nature of their work, create vast amounts of data, which SCD must store somewhere. In the past, a large part of the archival storage of data at NCAR was on half-inch reel-to-reel tapes like these. 
Each half-inch tape can hold approximately one billion bits of information. NCAR maintains over 22,000 of these tapes in its library, located in the computer room near the intermediate disk storage. With access to these tapes, users can access NCAR's archived data to test their theories, rather than collecting massive amounts of atmospheric data themselves. This media is being replaced by newer technology. Throughout the computer room, you can see small boxes in white cabinets labeled network systems, network adapter. These adapters, in effect, translate the data often in different computer languages and compensate for various designs among the machines on the network so that different forms of information can be used together. All of the computer systems supported by SCD are connected by means of high-speed adapters and lines capable of sending data at speeds of 50 million bits per second. This IBM 4381 dual processor mainframe, located in the back of the computer room, is used as a front end to SCD's two Cray supercomputers. Through the 4381, users can submit their jobs to the Cray's via the network, and users located at other sites around the country may also submit jobs through the 4381 through a variety of communications networks. In this area of the computer room is the Gandalf Port Contention Device, or PAX, which is, in effect, a sophisticated switchboard that can handle up to 1,000 incoming and outgoing calls at one time. The PAX provides links to a variety of systems for interactive and batch jobs that are lined up waiting for access. SCD serves as a communications hub for the university's satellite network, or USAN, which provides high-performance satellite data transmission facilities between NCAR and a number of universities and research centers across the country. By utilizing dishes like this one at NCAR, researchers at remote sites can access data or submit jobs to the NCAR computing system much faster than over phone lines. NCAR also has a place or is a node on the national system called the NSF Network Backbone, which links all the NSF-funded supercomputing centers. NSFNet and USAN are providing NCAR users with greatly improved communications capability over the earlier technology that is based on the regular telephone line system. Returning to the computer room, we see two Digital Equipment Corporation PDP-1170 minicomputers and a Pyramid 90X Super minicomputer. These are used by SCD staff for program development and computer documentation. This section of the computer room is the console area. Here, operators monitor all of the computer hardware. These consoles alert the operators to bottlenecks that could slow down traffic on the network and to erratically performing programs, as well as computers having hardware failures. The console operators control the restart procedures when it is necessary to bring a device back up after it is shut down for maintenance or equipment failure. Also located near the console area are several VAX 11780s and 11785s from Digital Equipment Corporation. These machines are used by the staff and scientists at NCAR to write, edit, compile, and process programs. Six IBM 3480 dual data cartridge storage systems and the accompanying tapes provide a large part of the permanent data storage at NCAR. Each cartridge contains approximately the same amount of information as half-inch reel-to-reel -reel tape, but it is much easier to store and use. These tape cartridges are the media that is replacing the half-inch reel-to-reel tapes shown earlier. The SCD tape cartridge collection is growing at an approximate rate of 1,000 cartridges per month. The mass storage control processor, which is also an IBM 4381 computer, manages the IBM 3480 cartridge system, the twin laser printers, intermediate disk storage, and the Dicomed film equipment that provides graphics output to SCD users. These are SCD's two Xerox 4050 laser printers. Installed in 1986, they can each produce 50 pages per minute of printed output, including graphics. Today, computer output is no longer only in the form of numbers. SCD's computer graphics department can produce more useful output for scientists in the form of images, which can even be animated. Most graphic output is produced by two Dicomed D48 film recorders, one of which is dedicated to 105mm microfiche, the other to 35mm microfilm. Many jobs utilize SCD's graphics output capabilities. In fact, on an average month, the SCD graphics output group processes about 150 billion bits of data, 
resulting in the production of 1.25 million frames of film per month. The film processing system utilized at NCAR was designed and developed specifically for NCAR's needs by members of the SCD staff. SCD also supports the production of 16 millimeter movie film from the data the computers produce. The old saying, a picture is worth a thousand words, is very true, but animation provides even more information. Scientists can easily take this portable data with them when they give seminars or travel to other research institutions. The floor of the computer room is carpeted with special anti-static carpet tiles, allowing the normal static charges of the human body to discharge into the floor rather than into the equipment. This prevents accidental damage to the sensitive circuitry within the computers. The floor is also elevated about 26 inches above the concrete underfloor. The elevated floor allows room for intricate and complex wiring for the various computer systems, as well as directing cool air supply to computer systems. The computer room must be kept at 68 degrees Fahrenheit, plus or minus 3 degrees, and at 45% relative humidity to ensure proper operation of the computer systems. Many motors and blowers in the room make for a slightly noisier and cooler environment than most people are accustomed to. Also, large motor generators convert 60 hertz power to the 400 hertz power required by the Cray equipment. They also supply output voltage to the supercomputers and their disk controllers. Just the Cray XMP48 system requires 325,000 watts of 208 volt 400 hertz power and 83,000 watts of 208 and 120 volt 60 hertz power per hour. Computers demand a constant flow of clean electrical voltage. Any sudden drop, surge, or slow reduction or brownout in power can be damaging to computer equipment. To help prevent this damage of equipment and interruption of service to our users, most of the communications gear and small systems are connected to a battery-powered uninterruptible power supply, or UPS. When needed, this battery system can supply power to the equipment for approximately 15 minutes. If the power problem has not been resolved by this time, the operators are then able to shut down the equipment in an orderly manner. Now that we've taken a look at all the equipment operated by SCD, let's follow a typical off-site job through the computing facility as a pair of atmospheric scientists test a theory they have about rainfall patterns. First, the scientists develop their program and algorithms offline and define the SCD's archived data that will be used during the program run. The program is transmitted to NCAR via telephone lines or the Vitalink satellite system. Next, the Gandalf port contention device directs the job to the various computing systems. When the job first enters the NCAR local network, it undergoes the necessary conversion that enables the NCAR computer system to use the data. Archived data needed by this job is acquired from SCD's half-inch tape, tape cartridge, or the intermediate disk storage. This data is loaded onto the DD49 disk drives on the Cray XMP48. The program makes its way to the top of the job queue, enters the Cray XMP48, and processing begins. As the job is processed, it is transmitted to disk files. The final output will be delivered to the scientists in the form of digital transmission, tape, or film. The scientists can review their data immediately to determine the accuracy of their theory. If more tests are required, they can request them in the same manner as before, accessing the same or other sets of data available at NCAR. They may also wish to consult with others about their work. SCD maintains a staff of consultants specifically for this purpose. Scientists can confer with SCD programming staff, computing specialists, or other scientists doing similar research. We hope you have enjoyed this tour of the Scientific Computing Division at NCAR. If you desire more information about systems covered in this tour, please see the window display, or you may contact the receptionist.